just about to get started. So thank you for coming. And you can go to my link in my profile to go ahead and start, start shopping. All right, Carol, we are live on all the other ones. So welcome everybody to Carol's Wild Minis Prime Day Sale. If Amazon gets to have a Prime Day special deal sale, Carol yeah. gets to have one too. Uh, Carol gets to have one too. So probably stand in the middle better for the picture. Carol, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's how these things go. They're they're live and direct. We sort of, we sort of, figure them out. now, you know, you've run a couple of these, Carol, and I think one of the things that we've noticed that you have a diverse audience and you have some people that are art lovers, you have some people that are photographers, you have some people that have known you for years, and you have some people that just found out about you today. So I, yeah. think, I think in terms of an agenda, is, as people continue to join, one, I think you should introduce yourself. Two, I think you should introduce the dog. And then three, we'll we'll get into some we'll get into some interview questions and then and then start the show if that works for you. That sounds great. So this is Byron. He's uh, my oldest dog. And he's and then this is Dante. That he he's coming to join the show. They like to participate. Wonderful. So, my name is Carol Walker, and I'm a photographer and author and a wild horse advocate. And I travel all over the world. I have the best job in the world. I travel all over the world photographing horses. And uh, um, one of the things that I love to do is spend time out in the wild with the wild horses. So we're gonna definitely tell some stories tonight about um, where I took the images. And um, you'll be able to ask questions and I'll answer them. And we'll also, um, we have a link for you to shop if you wanna buy any of the pieces. And uh, yeah. So Patrick, should I just go ahead and start? No, no, not yet, not, not okay. yet. Now that, I've, now that I've got you, and I, I've gotta talk about some current events. One, yes. one of the things that we're hearing between Facebook and Instagram, um, look at the cameras and you could probably walk forward a foot. But wh while, while that's happening, because Carol will never say this, I gotta say this, you know, wild horses are a passion. Saving wild horses is her passion. And, yeah. you know, I would imagine a lot of your followers know that that you are passionate about wild horses, know about wild horses. I'm not even sure most people know that there are wild horses that still exist in the United States. And one, this is an extremely topical subject. Two, Carol will never blow her own horn, so I will. You were featured in the last two weeks in the New York Times and on Tucker Carlson on Fox News, yes. all talking about this subject. So that is amazing. Uh, that's amazing for a photographer. That's amazing for anyone. I mean, you're sort of a celebrity at this juncture. So <laughs> I, I, I think before we get into the show, it would be really, really cool if you kind of just gave some color to what's going on in this wild horse situation right now, what's yeah. happening in terms of current events, and you know, independent of supporting you as an artist and supporting your art, like making people aware even further about what's yes. going on. Absolutely. So we have um, wild horses in 10 Western states in the United States. And um, in 1971, the Wild Horse and Burrow, um, Wild Roaming uh, Wild Horse and Burrow Act was passed to protect wild horses on our public lands where they belong. And um, right now, wild horses are under fire. We're going to have maybe 10,000 more removed from public lands and their homes and their families this year alone. And there are already 50,000 wild horses in holding facilities where they really don't belong. And so um, I'm doing everything I can to see if we can manage wild horses on public lands where they belong instead of rounding them up with helicopters, scaring them to death and then warehousing them in these holding facilities. And um, part of what, what was in the New York Times and on Tucker Carlson was the Bureau of Land Management has this incentive program where they're paying people to take wild horses and wild horses are ending up with slaughter um, because people take their money and then they dump the horses. And that's just wrong, we, we can't have that happening. So I've been trying to get people aware of what's going on and it's been wonderful that we've been getting so much press recently because it's really it's been really hard to get any press about this 
So part of when I started photographing wild horses back in 2004, part of what I saw was these horses are beautiful. They're well suited for our public lands. They belong there. And I wanted to show in my art that they're gorgeous. They're not starving to death. And why? And they have families and relationships. And they deserve to be respected and treated with care. So that was really my... Um, my goal with my art and with the books I've written about wild horses. So um, I try to capture kind of a part of their, their, their spirit and their soul in my images and try to translate that to people so they can see it. So that's really, that's really what I'm about. Now you just rescued a wild horse. Well, I didn't rescue it, but um, there's a wild stallion that I absolutely love and have photographed for four years. His name's Blue Zeus. And when he got rounded up last fall, I approached Sky Dog Sanctuary and I said, Claire Staples, and I said, can you please take him if he gets rounded up? And he just arrived at the sanctuary in Oregon. And it was such a heartwarming moment, seeing him jump off the trailer and be in a pasture, be able to run, be out of those holding pens. It's just amazing. So I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on, but um, people should look up Sky Dog Sanctuary. They do tremendous work and uh, rescuing wild horses. So I was part of that and very proud. So um, that was really exciting. That was on Friday. Now we got a question from Kendra on Facebook and I, I should also note that you can you can leave questions on Instagram. You can leave face questions on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. Yeah. Carol's happy to answer those as we go along throughout the evening. Um, you know, Kendra's got some interesting questions, and you know, I'll, I'll, it's two parts. I'll, I'll answer the one, and then the second you can decide how to answer. But why does the government want the horses off the public lands? That's number one. And then number two, right. are the roundups more aggressive under the current administration than in prior years? Um, the horse, they want the horses off our public lands. The primary reason is livestock, the livestock lobby, the, the livestock raising. They see the horses as competition for their cattle and sheep. They want them off the land. Um, mining and gas are kind of secondary issues, wanting the horses gone, but it's really the livestock. And it's not more aggressive under this administration. What happened was um, uh, the current plan for this year was set up under the previous administration, the previous president's administration. And that's what's going on right now. And we're trying to interrupt that. We're trying to say, stop, just stop it. Just stop running up the horses. Let's come up with a new plan and let's um, manage the horses on our public lands. It's much cheaper and it's more humane for the horses. Wonderful. And I think we'll take one more question and then, and then okay. get into the show. And this was, this was from Cassie on Instagram. And Cassie, I love you for asking this question. How do you get close enough to get those amazing pictures? And let me just tell you, <laughs> Daryl doesn't look it, but this is an experienced off-roading techie mechanical <laughs> woman. Okay. She has to, well, I, you answer, but this is honestly like my favorite part of how hard you have to work to get these actual <laughs> photos. So maybe just give us a general on, on, on what you actually have to do to photograph these beautiful, beautiful animals in the wild. Well, first you have to get out there. So you have to have a vehicle that can handle horrible roads and you have to go when it's not like muddy because you get stuck and then you're glassing around and with your binoculars and driving, 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 looking for the horses. And over time, I kind of get to know where the horses go to water so I can find them. And then I have a really big lens. I actually just recently switched to mirrorless. So it's smaller and lighter, which is great because hiking with an enormous lens is really tough sometimes, especially in the summer. And you have to watch out for rattlesnakes in the summer and you have to worry about getting stuck in the snow in the winter. So it's an adventure for sure. And you are, you correct me if I'm wrong, this is all on BLM land, right? Bureau of Land yes, Management. Yes, this is Bureau of Land Management land. Um, public land, this is our land. Mm -hmm. And these are our horses. They belong to us. They do not belong to the government. I love that line. I love you saying that. That's amazing. Yeah, and and she's downplaying the fact that she's sort of the off-roading queen <laughs> of, of of adventure photography in a four-wheel drive vehicle, 
trying to find these. Yeah. Two stairs. Trying to find these animals, changing tires when needs be, uh, getting out of getting stuck, and there's not exactly a gas station around every corner where you're no. going. Eighty miles from town. Yeah. 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 Um, but why don't we just get right into the sale, and sure. you, you you can start where you like, and I and I think you should mention so all of these pieces are on your website. Is that correct? They're on my website, and um, we have already had twelve sales of the pieces that are there um, in the sale. And uh, so um, if you well, find- a, a little bit more than that, now eight, number 26 and number 15 are gone. So, but we'll, okay. we'll, so we'll, yeah, we, we, we can get into that. But wait, you so wait, so you're having a sale. Amazon Prime is having Prime Day right now, right? It's yes. like a 48 hour buying festival. And Carol's like, you know what? If Amazon gets to have a sale, I get to have, have a sale. Too. I, love, yes. I love my followers as much as Jeff Bezos loves all the rest of us. So why not? Why not? Let's go. Well, yeah. And I appreciate everybody who has been giving attention and coming online and following me and, and buying things. It's wonderful. So thank you for doing that. So, you, so, so what, what have you discounted? So everything is... It, it's, everything is 50% off what a normal price. So it's a great deal. And the kicker is... If you go on and sign up for my newsletter, you get an additional 15% off of your purchase. You're so, going discount crazy, Carol. You're going yeah, to- I'm going discount crazy. So that's why it's wild minis. They're they're wild. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, why don't you start right in? I've got I've got little banners that I can turn on for each one. So just tell me so I don't screw up the numbers. Okay, we've got uh, number eight. And um this is um Two Sable Island Stallion Seven, and uh, this is on metal, and it's metal. ninety dollars. And the very cool thing this this is a glossy metal, and um, I really like the metal prints how they hang. It's very cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. That one sold all already, by the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, guys. This is this is the challenge of live art shows. Oh, yeah. this, this, like, this is another glossy metal, and um, which number is this one? This one is number 37. Got it. Painted family. Um, so this is a, a family of wild horses in the Red Desert Complex. And this is the mare, her yearling, and her foal. And they weren't rounded up last year. It was wonderful to see them. And um, and I would I would show show to the Instagram camera, show to the laptop, because sometimes we need to see that with the detail. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. And uh, so, yes, it's uh, and the Red Desert Complex has some of the most beautiful, um, stunning and colorful horses. Where, where, then, where is the Red, Red Desert Complex? Just so that's we... in Wyoming. Wyoming, OK. Yeah. So uh, let's see. All right. Cloud. This one is number 27. 27. And this one's seventy five dollars. And. Cloud is the most iconic wild horse in history. Um, he lived in the Prior Mountains of Montana, and he, uh, Ginger Kathleen's made four, uh, three films about him, and he, he contributed to people understanding that wild horses have families. And this is one of my very favorite pieces, um, Cloud, uh, Cloud's Pride, and he's, uh, he's um, really looking glorious. Uh, there's another stallion coming toward his family. And I, I love this piece. And that one's on, is that canvas? Yeah, this is on canvas and it's $75. Okay. So this is number 34. This is my only, this is the only acrylic in the sale. This is out of the dust and uh, it's $80. And this is the only one that isn't ready to hang. It's actually an acrylic block. It's quite thick. Whoa. So you can just kind of set it down. But you can see how the colors just glow with the acrylic. So acrylic can be a very cool surface. I used to only like canvas. And uh, now I'm really getting into uh, the metal and the acrylic because they do something different. So this is a wild stallion in Sandwash Basin. And he's coming toward the water hole. Where's, where's the Sandwich Basin? Sandwich Basin is in Colorado. Colorado. And it's about an hour from Craig. And uh, it's a dusty, dusty summer day. And dust is a friend of photographers. It's not really a friend of our equipment, but it, it makes beautiful images. 
Sorry, bird. <laughs> she moves around a lot. Dogs are part of the show. That's how it goes. I know, I know. So another mini. This one's a smaller one. Number 10. Okay. Taylor's Twins. And so this is in the Camargue area of Southern France, which is one of my favorite places to photograph. Whoa. The Camargue horses are native to France. They used to be wild. They're not anymore, but we got, we get them out in the ocean swimming. And these two just look like twins. And, uh, wait, really like, wait, Southern France, like Saint Tropez, that area, like, uh, no, um, near, uh, the town is called Saint Marie de la Mer. And it's about an hour and a half from Marseille. Okay. And uh, and there's ocean and marsh. And this one is $55. Amazing. All right. So it's a hot Picasso night. This is number 49. We added this one because all the other Picasso pieces sold. <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are Picasso pieces? Just explain. So that. Picasso is a... Very famous wild stallion from San Wash Basin. We uh, we haven't seen him since uh, 2019. I think he passed, but he was in his 30s. He had a wonderful life, and people just from all over the world came to see Picasso. Um, he uh, is an amazing stallion, one of my very favorite stallions. And here he's leaping as he runs back to his family. He would go to the water hole and hang out with the other stallions and play, and then he'd go back to his family. So he was very entertaining to watch. And this, this piece is called Picasso Leaps, and it's 24 by 36, and it is uh, 325, so. $325 for that one. When you, when you say go back to his family, is that like our normal sense of family, like wife, children, or like? Okay, good question. So wild horses have families, and there'll be a stallion, mares. Sometimes there'll be a lieutenant stallions that help uh, take care of the family and, and drive intruders off. Mm -hmm. But usually there's one stallion, several mares, and the youngsters. And the young fillies get, um, they leave when they hit estrus, which is around one and a half to two. What's and that, then that, that, like just a, a level of... They go into heat for the first time. Puberty, got it. Okay. And then the young boys get kicked out by the stallion when they're about two or three because they start to be a, a kind of a challenge. Yeah. So, um, and the young boys will go off sometimes together. We call them bachelors and hang out and cause lots of trouble. So uh, the families, sometimes the mares and stallions have been together for a decade. So it's particularly heartbreaking to think about wild horses being rounded up and removed from their families because they have bonds that have gone over years. And you can see that the families are very close. So one of my favorite family pictures, number four, it already sold, sorry, but this is the wild family. And this is a gorgeous mare and her yearling looking for reassurance and her foal. And you can see the love there. It's, you know, these are not just, uh, these are not just domestic horses in a pasture that aren't related. These are, these are very tight bonds. And, uh, and I think that's important for people to know because it's, that's why it's so inhumane separating these horses. You're going to get me crying, Carol. You're going to get me crying. Um, <laughs> Jay, so, Jay, Jason asked, do you see any wild horses in Corolla? It's, I guess that's in North Carolina. Yes, there are. They're not uh, managed by the Bureau of Land Management. They are managed um, by, an, by a separate organization. Private one. Got it. Okay. So this is a different relationship. What number is this one? This one is, oh, sorry. Okay. Seven. Two Andalusians. Stallions. And uh, this is one of my very favorite pieces. These are two gray Andalusian stallions in Spain in a pasture together. They're brothers. And um, most people think that, oh, stallions will fight. But no, Andalusians are actually bred for their wonderful temperament. And these two grew up together. And so they're coming together in a really loving way. And um, I love this piece. It's, um, this is an 11 by 14 and it's $75. How did you, how did you get the black on that? When did you, what time of day did you so it? It was, in a, it was in a pasture with a really dark hedge in the background. So I just darkened it a little bit. Yeah. I tend to, with my photography, I like a more natural look. I don't do huge 
big Photoshop moves on top of things. I like to think, have things look as natural as possible. So, and as long as we're doing end illusions, I'm gonna to go to number 19. This is El, El Caballo Negro, mm -hmm. and it's 12 by 12, and it's also $75. And this is an Andalusian stallion um, that grew up in Spain, but now, it now lives in, in uh, Colorado. And what I notice when I, I love photographing horses running in pastures, and at the end of their run, they tend to just stop and be very proud of themselves. And here he is, he just stopped, and he's, he's blowing a little bit, and he's just looking very gorgeous. So um, I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, the composition on that one is fantastic. What size is that one? 12 by 12. 12 by 12 when it's on canvas? Yeah, and it's $75. $75, okay. So Cassie on Instagram says, I'm almost too emotional to watch this. They need to stop the roundups. Trust me, Cassie, we all feel this way. Carol almost had me cry in there a few minutes ago. <laughs> so let's go to number 25. Okay. This is a wild horse, and his name is Looking Glass, and he's an Appaloosa stallion, and he evaded the helicopters. It was so funny where he was. Somehow they never got him, so he's still wild and free, and I just love Appaloosas. I, I think they're the best, and he's a character. He's always very fun to photograph. He'll come out, and he's kind of mellow, and he stands there, and he looks at me. She's like, oh, he's, she's here again. So anyway, this this is 24 by 36, and it's 325. So beautiful. And we have to talk about the gypsies. So gypsy banners are very colorful. How did you get that out the wall so quickly? FYI, by the oh, way, <laughs> I just did. So um, this is a mare, and this was in winter. We had, it, the temperature was unbelievable. It was 20 below and they were having like the polar vortex. It was crazy. And um, this is a gypsy mare and she's got snow on her nose, you can tell, and beautiful blue eyes. So I just love the gypsies. And um, this is a metal print and very easy to hang on the wall. That's glossy metal. You can see the reflection. Yeah, it's glossy. Yeah, which is cool. Um, Stacy's asking from Instagram, do you have a small version of the Gypsy in the Forest 2? Yes. So Gypsy in the Forest 2, she's jumping ahead for me. This oh. is Gypsy, oh, I that's Gypsy in the Forest 1, and this is Gypsy in the Forest 2. And this is the same mare, but you can see both of her gorgeous blue eyes. And this is an 11 by 14. The other one is 16 by 20, so it's bigger. Got it. All right. All right, we have to go to Iceland. Cool off this summer, man. Which, yeah, which number is this one? This one is 31. 31, okay. This is 20 by 30. And I believe it's 295. And this is wild mane in the lupin. So in Iceland, lupin is not native, but it grows so big. The lupin, lupin, is, like, lupin, is, lupin is the purple flower here. Yeah, it's amazing. And so of course we had to put horses in the lupin and have them run. And this gorgeous boy, silver dapple boy, um, his mane was just flying and gorgeous. So um, it, Iceland is an amazing place and they have beautiful horses. They do not allow any other horses to be imported into their country. So there's only Icelandic, Icelandic horses in Iceland. So oh. it's a it's a beautiful place to visit. But well, they, do, they do have wild horses in Iceland? No, they're all owned. Oh, no. uh, they're Icelandic horses and they have wonderful, beautiful manes. So there's another piece in the show that I'm not showing tonight from Iceland, it's two horses at a waterfall. So Iceland is a terrific place to photograph horses. So I have another sandwash basin horse. Oh, and this is Charlotte. This is my female. Yes. They're all Aussies. <laughs> yes, hi. This is wild. 31. 
Wait, I have two thirty ones. Sorry, this is Wild Mare. Wild Mare runs, and she is running to the water hollow in Sandwash Basin. Gorgeous mare, and uh, yeah, so it's. Um, Waiting at the water hole is a great way to find wild horses and photograph them because they usually go to water at least once a day, often twice, usually in the morning and the afternoon. And, um, but with the wilder herds, you have to be careful because you don't want to scare them away. They're a uh, Adobe Town herd in Wyoming. I can't sit at the water hole. The horses take one look and they're gone. And I don't want them to not get a drink. So I don't do that for that herd. But this herd totally used to having photographers around. Got it. Amazing. So that's like the good that's a good place that to, to hide out to know you're gonna get the shot. Yes, unless you're scaring the crap out of them, you don't want to do that. <laughs> because right. then they won't drink. So um, let's see. More gypsies. So if you're feeling hot and you need a little winter. This one is for you. This is 38, Snowy Gypsies Run. And again, this was the minus 20 weather. And oh. we got this whole group of gypsy horses running together through the snow. It was absolutely amazing. For me, there is nothing better than having horses running straight at me. And yes, I have had close calls. And there are people who won't stand near me because I tend to have the horses come right at me. Are you so, are, are you are you holding the camera just no tripod like exposed? No, or? I have a monopod usually. So you're on a monopod right here in this yeah. freezing weather, and these guys are galloping at you at this speed, and you're just hold the line. You're just sitting there. Well, yeah. I mean, I I did have a long, a fairly long lens, so they weren't terribly close. And horses do not want to run you over. Um, especially domestic horses, they will take great care to avoid that. Wild horses, you have to be more careful because I've had times when stallions were fighting and I had to run to get out of the way because they were ignoring me and they could have run me over inadvertently. But horses won't run you over on purpose. But you have to be smart. And brave. I'll give you brave too. <laughs> Oh, yes. Can't forget about the two Sable Island stallions. So, and what number is this? And we're, get, we're getting a little lazy with our numbers, but I think, I think for the most part, people are going to your website and they're, they, they know which ones are which. But 14, two Sable Island stallions. Okay. This is, one of, this is my most famous piece. Um, Sable Island is an amazing place. Where is it? It's, it's off the coast of Halifax, Nova Scotia. It is a sand island, 42 miles long, and it's right in the middle of hurricane, where the hurricanes go through. Very severe weather, and there are horses and gray seals and birds, and that's it on the island. Wow. And these horses have these amazing wind toss manes. And these two horses are stallions that are friends. And one was with his family, and the other goes running toward him really fast. And I was like, okay, what's gonna happen? And they kind of cuddled together and they were grunting and they were kind of nosing each other and hanging out, but clearly no, no animosity at all. And they knew each other quite well. So I love this, this image. And that highlight, that island is hard to get to period, but it, it is, it, I think you said something last time, but I just want to follow up on like super restricted, right? They only allow extreme limited it's amount 500 of 500 people a year on that island and you have to go by plane, helicopter, or boat. Wow. And um, on this trip, I went on a cruise ship that went. And uh, last time I went, I went by helicopter. Wow. And that was cool. Do you have to like apply or get on some sort of list like way ahead of time? You have to go with like a group, yeah. Do you do, yeah. do you know, Cassie's, Cassie's asking from Instagram, how in the world did the horses even get on that island? Well, they, um, some of them were shipwrecked and then others were brought from Canada. Whoa, they were shipwrecked and they've just lived there ever since? And well, a lot of them were brought from Canada. Mm -hmm. They're protected completely. These horses are so lucky. Unlike our wild horses here in America, no one is ever going to round these guys up. They're protected for life. 
And it's amazing. There's a different attitude in the horses that don't get rounded up. They're so much more relaxed. Their birth rate is lower. It's just an amazing situation. Wow. And, do, you, do you feel like you can feel that when you're there, just seeing those animals like that? It's very inspiring seeing them. So we have to go on to the blue Zeus portion of our show, which is number 44. We'll start with this one. Blue Zeus looks, and this is a 12 by 16 for 195. So blue Zeus is an iconic stallion. He's a blue roan and pinto at the same time. And when I first saw him, I was just absolutely stunned. I, I said, oh my God, this horse is so amazingly beautiful. Some horses just have like a presence about them mm -hmm. that you just go, whoa, the spirit of this horse is inspiring. And he's a devoted, he was a devoted um, father to his uh, babies and a devoted stallion to his mares. And I looked for him every time I went to the Red Desert. And um, I know he was like, oh, she's back. Um, I, I was one of his biggest fans, and um, as I said, he got rounded up last fall, and it was absolutely heartbreaking. And we were trying to get him out of the holding facility at Canyon City. It's been eight months, and finally he got adopted by Skydock Sanctuary and uh, just on Friday. And so he's going to have a new life there, and uh, I'm very excited about that. It's wonderful. So... I have a lot of Blue Zeus pictures, and uh, this is another, this is on metal. This is number 47, and this metal. And by the way, Carol, we're, we're getting like weird pixelation bandwidth issues that sometimes happens. Okay. Uh, people, in, people in Carol's neighborhood are streaming Netflix right now, so we're, you know. <laughs> Probably. These things happen. These oh, things happen. And, and just to let you know, Patty says, love Blue Zeus, living at my favorite place now, Sky Dog. Yes. Yeah, you understand, but I don't understand, but that's okay. Yeah, so, he, so yeah, the Sky Dog Sanctuary, he is, uh, he's very blessed to be there. It's in Oregon, and it's a wonderful place. They take great care of the horses. Look them up. They are wonderful. Amazing. So and the quality just came back, so you're good to go. What is, what is that <laughs> on, color on that? So, what was that? What is that print on? It is on metal, but it's on a sheer metal that where where the image where the metal shows through in the image. So it's kind of a neat effect with the black and white, I think. Yeah, it's beautiful. And this is Blue Zeus looks down. And again, another metal piece with wonderful hardware in the back. Now, Dean, if, if, if I was to buy one of these, do I get a signature on the back of the metal? Um Fit. Yes, absolutely. So everything is going to be signed. Um, this one I can sign on the back as well. But yeah, the metal piece is all signed on the back. So everything will be signed, except the acrylic. I can't sign the acrylic. Yes. So I can give you a certificate of authenticity, though. That'll work. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Well, and you can, it's a little hard. Let's see. I can grab this one. This is the only wood print that I have. I love the wood prints. They're on maple. So this is Blue Zeus Walks, number 22. And it's on maple. And they paint it with white and then put the image on it. And um, you can see the wood sides. And then this is the hanging on a nail. So I love this. And uh, this was one morning at the water hall. I was... There was a water tank on the hill and I went up there and he started walking right toward me. And uh, I just get the chills when I get to spend time with a beautiful wild horse. It's like they, they let me into their world. Um, they can run off. They have four legs. They can go fast. I can't keep up with them. So if they don't want to be around me, they won't. And uh, I feel honored when they allow me to spend time with them. And sometimes it's cool, I'll come up on nap time, especially when there's small foals in the family, uh, there's a lot of naps. And the horses will just lie down, I'll be sitting on the ground, 
and they just lie down and go to sleep right in front of me. And I think that's really a measure of trust that they'll do that. Wow. So let's see if I can, I don't think I can get this one down. This is Thor. Thor's Twilight Portrait number 42. Thor is a very small but mighty stallion in McCullough Peaks near Cody. And I've known him Cody, since Cody, he, Wyoming. Cody, Wyoming. Yeah. I've known him since he was a baby. And here he is, the sun has just completely gone down. And he has this wonderful tangled mane. I just love those tangled manes. We call them wind knots or um, gypsy knots. They're just wonderful. And he is a he is a character. And but he's small, but he 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 doesn't take crap from anybody. So let's see, what else do we have? Oh yes, two more Blue Zeus pieces over here. So we have Blue Zeus's portrait, which is number 45 to the right, which is a beautiful close-up. This image is very, very sharp. You can see every hair and you can see his beautiful eye. Um, so that's one of my very favorite pieces and it's square, it's 24 by 24. And it's, I believe that's 295. And then next to it is um, Blue Zeus Looks. That's the same as the small one I showed earlier, but it's a large piece. It's 24 by 36 and it's 325. And this one is one of the very few pieces I did a little Photoshop. I have the brown of his eye in there, but the rest of it's in black and white. Love it. Love it. We should we should mention too that sometimes I've been showing the banners and sometimes I haven't, and it's sort of the nature of live art shows where sometimes yes. I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. All the pieces are listed on Carol's website. If you are watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, yes. there's links there. You can go to her site, or if you're on Instagram, the link is in the bio. Yes. Um, it's a prime day deal. It's what up to 50% off on some of these. 50% off plus if you sign up for the newsletter, it's another. 15% off, and uh, there are 48 pieces on there. Well, you're, still... down, you're, you're down to about 20 or so, I think. Okay, well, there's there, there's still some pieces left. And then, of course, you can go on my website if you prefer prints or other mediums or stuff like that, you can find um, many more images. So, But these were the ones that we had on the Prime Day mini sale. That's right. Prime day deal. Crazy day deal. Crazy every, day. Every, everything must go. It sounds so weird to water ski on prime day, but you know what, Carol? Why not? Why not? Why not? Wild and, horse on prime day. I love it. Yeah. And we're having fun. And, you know, I like I, I like deals. Um, so and anything that's in the show, you should mention, though, that this is, these are one, these are what you have is what you have. When it's gone, it's gone. That's how it works. Yes, right. the it's available, but but not the deals. But anyway, all, all of it's on the website. My apologies for. Being, being being lagging a little bit with banners here or there, but Carol's Bob and Weaving. I'm I'm kind of just a fan. Uh, all the all the images are on the website on the right. link, so you can find them there. Yeah, you're doing great. Keep rolling. Okay, very good. So, um, photographing wild horses. Um, I uh, I have a I actually have a book on photographing horses, but wild horses. It's very interesting. I tell people you should get out and see wild horses while you can while they are still out there um fine on the 10 as i said the 10 western states you can go visit them they're on our public land and uh you want to bring water you want to bring a good cell phone you want to have a spare tire and um get out there and go find some horses i tell people to do that all the time and i try to use a long lens because it's respectful of the horses. I mean, even if the horses, like in Sandwash Basin, where you could just walk up to them if you wanted to, no, I would like to let them live their lives and not interfere. The horses always know I'm there. They're not unaware that, of my presence, but I don't want to intrude as much as possible. I don't want to intrude on what their normal activities are. And then what happens is I'll see the foals nursing, I'll see the mares grooming each other, um, I'll, I'll see the stallions either fighting or just kind of challenging each other. So you see all of these behaviors if you're just quiet enough to watch and listen. 
I don't think there's anyone that watches this, Carol, that doesn't know how passionate you are about these animals and how much you love these animals. So it, it trust me, it's clear. It's clearly coming through. It's clearly coming through. It's amazing. So, and um, if people have any questions about the pieces or about wild horses, please feel free to message me, email me. Um, I'm happy to answer questions too. Yep. Does anybody have any questions right now? Oh, you you didn't talk about the big piece, Juan said. Which big piece? Did you have one of them? Oh, really? Two single island stallions, this one. Oh, okay. Um, Juan, wasn't there one that she had on the ground that she was going to show too? Maybe yes, I did. That was Picasso. Okay. Um, yeah, the 47 is already gone. Okay. Amazing, Carol. I think, you know, I was emotional there for a minute. I know some of the other viewers were. I think this continues to be an issue that the vast majority of people do not even know exists. So, you know, yes. I, really, I really have to commend you for continuing to call, you know, more attention to this issue. And I, I, I don't understand how anyone could say, like, we need to keep these wild horses, leave them be, let them run and roam. I mean, this is a national treasure. Yes. And people ask me, okay, what can I do to help? So right now, Congress is considering the budget for next year. And what you can do to help is contact your senators and representatives and tell them you want wild horses to stay on our public lands where they belong and manage them there. And yeah, there's I, I actually think that like you need to get that in your email autoresponder because I know a lot of these people would 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 happily do what they, you know, would at least like to know what the options are to how to how to preserve. Um, yes. You know, well, let, let, let's talk about that offline. We've got to dial up your marketing on that because this is it's pulling my heartstrings here. Yes. So, um, oh, so um, horses in the Wild Free Roaming Bur Horse and Burrow Act of 1971, horses were supposed to be managed where they were found. So eliminating the herds, removing the horses from the public lands is not part of the act. This is, th this is not in keeping with how we had agreed to manage these horses. So um, people say, oh, they double in population every four years, which is not true. They're, that's not accounting for deaths. Uh, also, the more that you round these herds up, the higher the birth rate is. There are methods of birth control that are humane and proven and that work. And what the Bureau of Land Management should be doing instead of trying to increase the budget by $45 million this next year to have more helicopter roundups and more holding facilities, what they should be doing is doing more birth control and more research and studies about how to manage the horses on public lands. Amazing, amazing. Well, Carol, thank you. Um, amazing show. Your this video will be available for replay if anyone wanted to watch it. I know some people popped in and said, you know, I, I've got to go, but please save it. It'll be saved on YouTube. It'll be saved yes. on Twitter. It'll be saved on Facebook, uh, yes. multiple different Facebook pages, as well as on the website. Uh, but other than that, I think I think we've covered all the questions. Unless you have any parting remarks, nice work. No, well, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate your interest in wild horses, your interest in my work and my adventure it really is an adventure um working to preserve the wild horses and um making artwork about them in honor of them so thank you for doing that thank you for for caring amazing well thank you for tuning in everybody and uh, have a have a wonderful evening